Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, this topic was one of the least like topics so far on my channel and we're gonna have to talk about it because I really think that this is something that we should agree is not up for discussion. Like I always think that things are not up for discussion. They're quite obvious, but sometimes common sense is just not so common. So we're going to get into it. Um, I remember a couple of weeks ago, I posted a video about women have always worked, right? And it got a lot of mixed reviews. Apparently at the moment right now, it is at 50%. So 50% of people like this and 50% of people do not like this. And I know that in the video, I promised to put some literature about um, the hidden face of Eve and women have always worked. There's an actual book called women have always worked. And then there is another set of, um, literature that I guess is not quite common in the media realm that proves that the whole idea of feminism is a ridiculous one. Um, and this is my agenda aside, because like you guys know, I tend to lead a lean away from modern day feminism. So hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you're new here, my name is Nehana Helper and I deal with these kinds of topics a lot. If you guys are not familiar with my conversation that I had with Dr. Annabelle Ford, please go ahead and take a look in the description. Maybe I will try to link it somewhere here. Um, but also, I also want to cite a lot of conversations that I've had with my mother, a person who was actually in the women's movement, in the original women's movement in the Caribbean and in America, that witnessed a lot of the things that I talk about on my channel. So you don't have to take my word for it. You can trust and rest assured that I've done my research and I've talked to the people who were on the ground dealing with some of these issues firsthand. And while me and my mother have varying degrees and differences when it comes to this particular topic, we can agree on one thing. The right to work is not a new concept for women. The right to work is not a right. It was actually something that was that every woman had to do because when you were in a relationship or when you were looking for a partner back in the day, as far back as the 18th and 17th century in the developing world and during the Industrial Revolution, women had to work alongside their partners. Not working was considered a privilege and a luxury of the aristocratic elites. And those aristocratic elite women didn't work because they could afford not to because they were married to um, aristocratic men who could afford to have her put up and be nothing but a social influencer towards his political causes, whatever it may have been. And those women were usually of a certain stature, social standing, family, and parents. Um, and so I don't know why people got mad because I said, it's like, I didn't want to bring across the women's movement as something to belittle. I think that what I was trying to, I wasn't trying, what I was bringing light to was the fact that the idea that we need to fight for the right to work was not why the women's movement started. The women's movement started because women wanted the right to um, be to have more autonomy in making decisions about the households that they ran. That meant having a voice in things that are directly affected childcare. They wanted more. They wanted better childcare, especially in America. There was a separate movement from Black America than there was from White America. And these movements, y'all correct me if I'm wrong, go do your own research because I have talked to the people on the ground, African-American women that I know personally on the ground, tell me that they wanted the right to better education, better schools, and have their children be protected in their communities. While white women wanted to have more autonomy 
in and outside of the relationships that they were having with their men. Things like being able to open a separate bank account without their husband's permission, own property without their husband's permission, and not have to be answering to her husband all the time. Nope. Excuse me. Nobody was trying to make feminism what it is today. There was, and, and even more so, that when it came down to the last minute, because this is now, fast forward a couple hundred years ago, um, a couple hundred years forward to the 20th century and the invention of the pill, there was a lot of controversy around whether or not the right to an abortion was going to be added to the feminist movement mantra. Can I say mantra or the feminist movement manifesto? That was the last thing. Now, I only bring that up because this is now what we lead with. And I'm always super surprised. Now, I'm not going to get into pro-choice and pro-life, but I'm always super surprised, just as a side note, how much Black women lead with this argument that was deliberately added by someone who was advocating genocide. So, eugenics, eugenics, hang on a second, let me get the word right because I don't want nobody. Yes, it is eugenics. Um, this eugenics, um, so eugenics basically is just encouraging certain people to procreate and discouraging others to procreate, right? And that's basically what Margaret Sanger promoted. And she was an advocate, like people called her an advocate and an activist. And so words are very important because when I come up on my channel and I'm reading off of a a script or I'm reading off of a website, what I see when I talk about these topics that's trending, people act like as if it's my opinion or this is, these are my words out of my mouth. I'm just calling it like I see it. And that's why sometimes I try to make sure that I leave the, the link to the, the websites in the description so y'all can go check that stuff out for yourself because I'm not the type of person to come up here and be like, yeah, they, these are the facts. All right. And if you disagree with anything that I say, please make sure to just pause the video and go open an internet explorer, Google or whatever your choice of, you know, research material may be, or go to the library, whatever, and check these things out for yourself and come back to me and tell me that I'm right or wrong. The other thing with research and, and statistics is that you're going to find yourself in a situation where you will have people writing statistics that suit their agenda. So like my grandfather always says, make sure that you get the facts, but make sure that you understand who's giving you these facts and what their agenda is. Question everything. You are allowed to question me. As a matter of fact, one of my one of my subscribers came and said that I was way off on two topics that I had brought up on my channel. And when I asked, you know, enlighten me. I wasn't being sarcastic because I know that I'm not freaking Nostradamus. I don't know everything. And I do want to be enlightened as to what other people think about this topic. It's here so that people can have an understanding and a dialogue and safe place. I'm not here to judge anybody. And I'm not attached to any of these, any of these things and ways of thinking. Even the things that I advocate and I feel strongly about, not attached to. Because I think that people need to be able to disagree so that we can understand why we disagree, where people are coming from, and to be able to understand the world we live in through the, through the eyes and minds of the people around us. And so please, disagree with me if you may, but please tell me why and where your disagreement comes from. Don't be lazy and just disagree, but make sure that you understand what it is you're disagreeing with and why. And be able to defend your topic, be able to defend your thesis, because I'm one of those people that is here to make sure that I do my due diligence and defend myself if I need to. But like I said, I'm not entirely attached to anything that I think, feel, or believe so much that I will argue with strangers online. So having said that, I would like to make sure that I go back to my point <laughs> in reinforcing the statement that I believe because it is obvious as the sky is blue that women have always worked. Whether or not that work was paid or slavery or in support of the man, or in support of a war, the fact of the matter is, is that for the most of us, middle, lower income women have always had the, the unfortunate reality of having to work. 
And I think that we have moved into the position and the place of feeling like as if that is some grandeur gift from society to be able to work outside of our homes. But the only reason that it's been so pushed and promoted is because companies and consumers, consumers, I'm sorry, actually benefit immensely by having women earn not just money from her husband, but their own money. Because at the end of the day, a woman will spend way more than a man who has a job. A woman will take out more loans. She will rack up more credit. She going to put the, that bag all the way away. Yeah, that weave, those red bottom heels, it's all going to be bought, baby. Men don't care about this stuff. Men are the worst consumers. And so it is of great interest and of great concern to those people who are in power and position to make sure that women stay in the workforce. However, we're now seeing a great shift, like I talked about in my other video with the whole dick situation. I mean, dink situation, dual income, no kids is that we will no longer be guaranteed another workforce within the next generations to come because more and more people are choosing not to have children so that they can consume more shit. Now, I know that there are other reasons as to why people are not having children. The economy is very uncertain and rocky. People are finding themselves in more debt and not be able to be very financially sound. And people just want to be able to enjoy their lives a lot more. But with that being said, we are putting our women at great risk for not allowing women the space and place to feel safe enough to explore that element of herself, which is motherhood. Because motherhood, believe it or not, is the bedrock of bedrock. Bedrock? <laughs> the bedrock of all society. And we need motherhood in order to raise people who will then go on and be the doctors, lawyers, garbage collectors, bakers, fishermen, to run society. Not everything will be able to be run by a robot, and your taxes will sure damn as hell not be paid by a robot. Our next topic in my next video, because I'm freestyling it this week, guys, in my next video, I will be making sure to make some notes and react to a video about we're dinks. <laughs> look at our dick life. I mean, look at our dink life. We're so happy because we don't have children. Um, so stay tuned and make sure that you are staying safe and staying free.